welcome once again to some Zero K action. It's going to be a team game on the Aberdeen map, and uh, yeah, it's going to be involve uh, quite a few people. Let's just skip the uh, pre-game chatter. Let's have a look. So, it's far to look at the bottom, uh, Falling Snow, uh, Monero, Prince Reaper, Patrician. God damn that font. Anyway, he's going to be going for uh, cloaky bots. We've got shield bots. Uh, sorry, hovercraft for Monero, not shield bots. We've got shield bots for Verted or Verfed. Verted, I think. And uh, finally, Lame Eler is uh, going as jump bots. We also got, oh, sorry, we also got an Acetal River here as well. I'm sure there must be a few points which should be crossable by land units. We'll just have to wait and see. Logic Demon. Uh, He's going to be going as uh, Cloakies, Greybeard, not really sure what the hell he's doing, Wildman going with gunships, shortbots for Regos, Maverick going with defences, great plan. And as for myself, I'm going to be going for Cloaky bots. we got aircraft for uh, Drunken Master as well, and shortbots for Regos, if I didn't mention that before, which I might have actually. What the hell? Ah, okay, I th that was interesting. Okay then. Well, there we go. So, let's just fast forward a little bit and uh, see what happens. Nothing too remarkable happening just yet. So, no crazy rushes. We do have uh, some aircraft zooming in. Wait a minute. I think we might have had some uh, harassments, possibly. Uh, we've got a couple of gnats also flying in for some reason without any uh, offensive gunships or anything really following them. Not really sure what they're going to do, but, uh, well, whatever. We'll see what happens. <clears throat> and uh, okay, so looks like someone on the enemy team. Ah, Prince Reaper went for the airplanes, no problem. Eh? Just follow these gnats though, just see what exactly they do. Huh. Okay. Interesting. Well, I suppose they can paralyze the freaker at the very least. <laughs> Too bad uh, Logic Demon's not going to send up his. <laughs> in the and he's not going to be sending up his freaking glaives, or else they actually might be able to do something. In any case, the Avengers should be able to take them out. They will get stunned a, a little bit, but actually, no, they won't get stunned at all, really. But yeah, they should be able to take them out relatively easily. So I'm not really sure what the hell the point of that was, except for revealing the fact that the opponents do need some anti-air, and they're going to be building that right now. We do have a couple of battles happening... at the bottom here. Unfortunately, I missed that, but it looks like the middle uh, might actually be held on to by ourselves. We'll just see what happens. Uh, my paltry forces will probably be uh, sent forward as well just to try to uh, pressure the opponents. They do have some defences set up. The Lotus though, not quite covering the edge, so really we can just uh, get through that relatively easily. Might even be able to take out a couple of buildings, although that commander there, uh, probably not, but whatever, we'll see what happens. In any case, we definitely do need some anti-air of our own, these freaking Avengers. Massive uh, pain in the ass indeed. And of course they're stealth as well, so they don't actually show up on a radar. Just gotta love that. Really, bold, eh? Not really sure why. I'm not really showing it, not really seeing anything that counts as particularly bold. I mean, these bandits are particularly bold, especially clumping up like that against the venom. Definitely needed to spread out a bit there. Vector Echoes does actually does actually have a couple of opportunities to do so. He just needs to take them, for God's sake. And yeah, we definitely do need more anti-air though, yeah. A couple more units coming into myself, just standard cloakies. I could have tried to go for maybe a cipher tour as well, like, given the uh, how spread out everything is, although, wow, they talk about defences everywhere though, Jesus Christ. Well, I still might have been able to strike a couple of things, maybe, that are not quite as well defended, but still, I didn't, wasn't quite expecting a lotus next to every freaking metal extractor by um, Svatopluk. Very interesting indeed. <laughs> well, we'll see how that works out. These Nats try to paralyze everything they can. They are managing to paralyze one of the uh, defenders, nothing else, basically. Finally, one of the uh, bench is going to be coming in. These guys are set on attack move, actually. They should be uh, focusing on their defenders rather than the mixes, but uh, in any case, down they go. We've got vamps coming in by Drunken Master to... Actually, is he on our team? Yes, he is. By Drunken Master to take out the enemy. Um, Avengers, but the enemy is starting to send in their own uh, vamps as well, so they're unfortunately going to get taken out. And we do have 
air supremacy for the time being, although as you can see Prince Reaper is uh, sending out vamp after vamp after vamp and uh, they actually do build relatively quickly as well for, uh, for aircraft anyway. <laughs> Couple of flares also just to smolt, although you probably should be spreading them out just a little bit, but oh well. What can you do? So, is this area really not traversable? Uh, let's have a look. Okay, it's not really saying too much, but uh, surely it must be. No, maybe it's not. I don't really know. What I know is that Prince Reaper is going to be beating the crap out of Drunken Master's vamp there, to say the least. Just watch it uh, crash rather majestically there. Bam. Just like War Thunder. <laughs> there we go, we actually have a couple of hovercraft being deployed, so maybe this water is actually not traversable, except for a couple of sections like this one here. And uh, this bit here, maybe this. Uh, actually, no, that doesn't really look like an actual path. Whoops. <laughs> okay, and of course, that bit there and the other bits there, that uh, should be traversable. Hmm. Interesting. Well, see how that works out. In any case, we are definitely uh, advancing forward as much as possible. We uh, still don't have any anti-air at all, despite what we've seen from our opponents, which is uh, a little bit lackluster by ourselves. Finally, I do actually have my own uh, Jeffros coming in for anti-air, so not too shabby. Our radar coverage... Wait a minute, that's not our radar coverage, is it? No, that's the enemy's radar coverage. That's not too bad, but we c I think we can probably see... Well, let's just have a look, actually. Actually, no, our radar coverage is kind of crappy as well. We do have... Oh, there we go. Fine, we do have radar right, right being built up there. So it is going to be revealing a bit... Probably not too much. The, it's not going to be revealing the fleas, which are very nice and cloaked. Banshee's just going to ignore them. They're, they're not going to have any of that. They're just going to fly straight over. And they get torn to pieces by anti-air. Because that's what Banshees do. <laughs> Rather than being retreated in the face of all that anti-air, for God's sake. Yeah, well, what can you do? What can you do? Wait a minute. He's, oh, he's morphing. So thank god for anti-air though, yeah we definitely do, do have a couple of them coming in, one, two, three, four, five, yeah, it, it'll do, it definitely won't really do very well against dedicated uh, ground, uh, anti-air forces, or sorry, ded dedicated air forces that are targeting them specifically, but uh, it'll certainly do, we have a nice little line set up as well, I probably should be putting my radars a bit further ahead, my uh, glaive's a bit further ahead, but I'll look into it. Frankly though, yeah, Flea's coming in, and there we go, finally my glaive's starting to come in. Themselves, crap loads of Venoms is all going to be coming in to do a bit of damage, but at the same time, uh, my Rocco's are mostly managing to stay out of, of um, harm's way, thank the Lord for that. I probably should be trying to focus, uh, to try to focus each Venom individually, really, rather than what I'm doing at the moment, but, uh, oh well, what can you do? So, yeah, yep. Not really uh, build, changing from my build, uh, not going to be building uh, any uh, assault Zeuses that will probably come in handy versus these Venoms to say the least. We'll just see what's happening at the top, not too much really. We've managed to expand quite a bit actually. Our opponents uh, really have been uh, rather timid this entire match from what I can tell. So this definitely goes to show that uh, timidity, unless if uh, you can really take advantage of your opponent's blunders, if they do make blunders, really does not tend to work. What well, they should have at least tried to do is, you know, expand up until the midpoint and then maybe uh, go a bit conservative from there with a couple of probing attacks here and then then, to then try to get, um, you know, to find uh, holes in our defences and then to exploit them, but uh, as it is, uh, yeah, well at least they're finally uh, going to be counter-attacking now. It's a little bit uh, a matter of too little too late. Uh, we do have quite a few more units coming in, including shield bots from Regos, so it should be interesting to see how this will factor in. And yeah, once these other units coming in, come in from Maverick to help out, which is going to be now, this uh, yeah, will definitely allow us to establish a nice little front line. I have to watch out with these Rockos though, they'll be able to outrange their defender. In fact, they could try to actually uh, attack. A few of them are very close to getting paralysed, but there we go, there we go, that's exactly what I need. I need Glaives to come in to, to act as a... Uh, Bit of a shield, and even then I'm still not micro my, um, there we go, finally, I'm micro my glaives, but I'm sure micro my rockers as well. What can you do, uh, vamps versus vamps? We should have some anti-air somewhere, yes we do. My own anti-air is still too far behind though, because I forgot to uh, send it forward. Oops. But oh well, what can you do? So they're going to be able to take a few pot shots at us. They're fancy schmancy bombers, which really sucks, but uh, oh well, what can you do? So who'll merge the victor? Unfortunately they still do have... Okay, I'm pretty sure these aircraft are in the process of crashing, yeah. 
just about. Yeah, they do still have air supremacy, but we do have our own anti-air slowly but surely coming up as well, and with radar as well, just to spot what they're doing. So here we go, here going to be spotting pretty much all the defences. Not too shabby, just see what's happening at the top there, so the line... Well, the lines at the top are mostly just staying put, really, but we do have, we definitely do have a, uh, a resource. Let's have a look. Okay, I'm presuming Team 2 is us then, maybe. <laughs> we definitely do have a resource advantage and a map control advantage. As well, the opponents are definitely not licked yet. Are they doing any... Uh, no, they're not going for any super units, mega weapons or anything like that. We do have a, a fusion reactor, nothing really too special there, though. Actually, probably could have tried to build it a little bit further away, actually, because I think this fusion reactor, if it goes off... Not really sure if it'll take out the spider factory or not, but I definitely will do, do will do a bit of damage. Probably taking out the solar collectors. Not really too sure to be honest. Well, in any case, they're going to try to go for another bombing run, and actually we'll be able to succeed. A couple of Moroccos will get destroyed as well as a couple of hammers. This guy really should be microed out of there. It's kind of bad micro on my behalf, but oh well. What can you do? And it's my anti-air needs to get a little bit further fucking forward as well, to say the least. Jesus Christ. Oh well. What can you do, eh? What can you do? Do you have a Falling Snow trying to attempt a counter-attack, but we do have a Lotus set up by myself, actually, to uh, defend against precisely that. Although, uh, actually, there is uh, definitely room for spiders to maneuver through there. In fact, I think, provided they stay on the very edge, they might even be able to avoid the uh, Lotus as well. But that's probably not going to be happening. Falling Snow, by the looks of it, is going up for a counter-attack. He's actually... Uh, okay, not really sure what he... Ah, okay, he's going to be... Uh, Attacking from the northern flank, and uh, yeah, we actually are a bit vulnerable there, but we do have a tick to act as a bit of a uh, roving landmine, so we'll just have to see if we can actually lure them straight into that, and uh, yeah, if we can just stun the crap out of them, we should be right. So they're, they're going to be attacking my line in uh, infilade, though, so definitely good uh, positional advantage by them. On the other hand, though, that tick does go off, and uh, yeah, it's basically going to spell the end for all these Rockos. So, very good use of the tick there, although good. Good use of uh, infilade fire by uh, so sorry by our opponents as well. Not really sure what the hell's happening there, but anyway, let's just go back to this. Yeah, indeed, very nicely uh, done by opponents. Unfortunately, uh, they clumped up their units too much, and uh, yeah, they should have taken the. Uh, <laughs> indeed, they sh should have had a couple of screening units, maybe just in case of their ticks and all that, because I did know that they were going up against. Well, actually, they should know they're going up against shield bots and um, cloakies as well, so roaches are also a bit of a concern. A couple of roaches would have taken care of that uh, army as well, but what the hell, uh, one tech is good too, as long as you have an actual follow up. My uh, support striker shooting his missiles are there. Again, he's not exactly shooting them at maximum range, so kind of negating much of uh, their advantage. I mean, really, a shotgun would have done just fine in this particular situation, but uh, oh well. What can you do? What can you do? They're still going to try to uh, counterattack us with a couple of recluses to a bit of a pain in the ass. Uh, versus Rockers, I'm not really sure how exactly that would work out. But at the same time, though, we do have our own, uh, yeah, I do have my own artillery units, my own hammers. I'm going to be bringing the Hummer down on them. And in fact, we've got ten of them, bizarrely enough. Some of them mine, some of them my allies. Top line is still relatively static, though, we finally did a bit of a counterattack from rockers and firewalkers, so a bit of artillery as well just to help out, pretty large range, yep 900 range, not too shabby. Indeed it should be able to outrange this stuff pretty freaking easily. Actually the Kramer's range isn't that bad either actually. But in any case they'll be able to do quite a bit of damage, uh, even though we, as you can see we do have uh, Jeff Rose and all that spreading out to avoid the uh, air effect damage by the uh, firewalker. Pretty expensive uh, bit of artillery but uh, pretty damaging as well as you can see. Especially up against stuff that's actually clumped up. But even against individual units, it does do quite a bit of initial damage. So, not too shabby indeed. And of course, because units, um, because buildings cannot run away like units can, and the Firewalker would be uh, particularly effective against them as well. Bam. Like that one right there. Not too shabby indeed. We'll have a look at what's happening on the bottom. Hopefully, we're going to be seeing some lines of bucking, perhaps. I don't you know. In any case, opponents definitely could try to go for uh, their own. Actually, I didn't even notice they had one of these. In any case, they could try to go for uh, their own artillery, but no, they're actually going for pyros instead. And that might actually be the answer to the artillery that I'm bringing to bear on them. As you can see, I'm leaving my artillery a bit too far forward, but no. Only temporarily. There, there actually was a window 
that could have been exploited to take out the hammers, but nope, with a couple of Zeuses, a warrior and even a couple of Rockos, uh, that's probably going to negate whatever flank attack they would have done on the hammers, and I believe I should still have radar coverage, nope, we do not actually, well, hopefully I'll be building radar at some point, I can actually have radar coverage of what's happening, just have to wait and see, there we go, we actually have a couple of pyros coming in. A bit of damage, but not right much really. They're just sending their stuff in mostly yeah, piecemeal while my artillery continues to pound the living daylights out of them with impunity. I mean, granted, the hammer doesn't really do much damage per second, but at the same time, though, I mean, it's long range basically means it can fire, you know, it can sit back in the fire behind other stuff anyway. In fact, I probably should have mixed in a couple of um, snipers with them as well, actually, a couple of sharpshooters. That's the official title. And at the very least, I definitely should have kept a, a, uh, a warrior near them at the very least. But it doesn't really matter. I mean, look at this. I've got um, allied fugs and a couple of other things to defend uh, my hammers anyway. I actually wouldn't kill them to advance a bit further forward, actually. And we do have a fresh attack by the enemy, but yeah, they're just going to get completely destroyed. Raider units usually are going to be very good against assault units, but the only problem is, though, that they're getting funneled due to the wreckage, and thus the Zeuses were able to use their splash. Um, and their splash paralysis uh, damage to paralyze them and then to, de to destroy them because they're all nicely clumped up. In fact, I dare say what they're doing with the uh, recluses. Where are they? Well, there, there's. Okay, well, I see. Okay, whatever. Rocco's then. Yeah, that sort of indirect fire stuff is exactly what's needed for this sort of battlefield. Although raider units could certainly uh, d still come in handy, but uh, they kind of have to. Be sure to stay out of the way of uh, splash damage. And the thing is, I mean, because of this, the nature of this battlefield that we have here at the moment, all these wrecks and all that. Uh, yeah, close quarters combat can actually work, provided that you're careful of what you're standing up against. What? So you're very careful indeed. Praetorio level five. Wow, he looks rather nasty to say the least. But with the amount of uh, bots we got going up against them, well, actually, no, two commanders making uh, what appears to be a bit of a last stand. Uh, too bad I wasn't focusing fire on Falling Snow's commander, otherwise maybe we'd have been able to take it out, probably not, but whatever, we've got the short bots coming in. Finally, uh, the Felon should be able to, sorry, to discharge quite a bit of its energy, most likely, I'm just going to be coming in. Thug's also coming in to support from the front, unfortunately these commanders will probably be able to make it out of their alive. Shield bots wall is going to have to retreat, the shields are definitely yeah, way too low to keep on fighting. We did manage to do quite a bit of damage to them, and as you can see we're also on the cusp of destroying one of their um, factories as well. Actually, it's too bad we weren't able to destroy the roach just as it was coming out of the building, and that would have been uh, pretty funny to say the least. But, uh, ah well, what can you do? So what exactly is this guy equipped with? Huh. Interesting, very interesting indeed. Alright, not too shabby, and... Uh, yeah, actually, yeah, I are continuing to hammer to have my position. Thankfully, uh, my support striker is... Uh, well, he's got less health, but I'm pretty sure... Oh no, wait a minute. They do have a one auto repair system by the looks of it, and I've got... Uh, two. So, okay, he's able to tank a bit of damage, but yeah, those missiles not exactly uh, doing too much damage at all. Uh, some heavier stuff definitely would have come in handy uh, in terms of the uh, commander weapons, but instead we're just going to have to... Con Contend with having a uh, funnel web instead, which uh, I suppose should get the job done. Indeed. And bam, just gonna let that think. Especially with its complement of drones and all that, that probably should spell the end for the enemy at the bottom. As for the top, though, we actually do have a uh, whole bunch of uh, cloaked units, including a whole bunch of Jeffros for some reason, walking up really close to the enemy at front lines, and they might be able to do a bit of damage, maybe. I don't know. Oh, there we go, this stinger will eventually get destroyed at the very least, although one would think it would have been paralysed first, or apparently not. Patrician's commander, not really sure what the hell he even is actually, but he's going to be a bit of a pain in the ass as well. He's actually going to be resurrecting a stinger, which I believe you can do while cloaked. Not really sure why exactly he got out of cloak then, but I'm pretty sure the Lazarus device can resurrect. I think the enemy team is struggling when it comes to their energy needs, most likely. From what I can tell anyway. Hmm. Okay, this is interesting. Huh. Okay then. Yeah, I think they are just struggling when it comes to the uh, energy usage, although actually no, maybe not. He's just building and reclaiming, which actually does uh, get rid of the shield. 
Ah, interesting little line of uh, Jeffro's though, not really too much in terms of anti-ground troops, but uh, well, what can you do with the Crabe and the Zeus advancing, I dare say, yeah, the enemy team in the top is uh, looking kind of untenable at best. Got a stream of fleas coming in bizarrely enough, but we actually do have uh, some right units to, cut to um, sorry, we got some right units to counter them, so really we are uh, definitely uh, staying a couple of steps ahead of our opponents, you know, they're trying to send in countermeasures, we've already got countermeasures to those countermeasures, and uh, yeah, generally put, we're just managing to stay ahead pretty nicely. This Praetorian is going to be a bit of a pain in the ass, though. They probably shouldn't be getting that close to the funnel web, and the funnel web should not be getting that close to the front line, actually. It really is a support spider, to say the least. But, uh, oh, well, what can you do? We have a couple of more uh, friendly bots coming in to try to destroy him, and maybe, just maybe, oh, no, never mind, he's going to jump out. Of course, I forgot the actually can do that with the uh, jump jet commander. Jump jet commander, sorry. Oh, okay, and of course he's got a personal cloak as well, so pretty good for jumping in, jumping out, healing up, bam. Easy peasy, a lemon squeezy. And this funnel web's still continuing to stay alive though, though maybe a couple of building units to repair it wouldn't hurt either, but really there goes the uh, short bot factory. Oh no, no, that was just an energy... really? Okay, well thought that was the short bot factory, but in any case, it, whatever that was there got the hell blown up, that's for sure. Well, that's not grammatically correct, I know, but oh well, got the shit blown out of it, so there you go, how's that? <laughs> uh, indeed, so quite the round indeed, but as you can see, we have been steadily pushing forward, we've ignored this little strong point they've set up, not, not really much of a need to go to that, just a couple of tactical nukes will handle that pretty easily. And uh, yeah, I haven't really been paying too much attention to what's happening on the north, but mostly yeah, we've just been steadily pushing there as well. And uh, yeah, really, I mean, you could say it's been a relatively steady game, but uh, yeah, it goes to show that having uh, the right unit combinations and uh, trying to anticipate what the opponent's going to apply with, what they're going to do next, it definitely comes in handy like you've seen before. So, not too shabby indeed. And of course, aggressive play, provided that you know you're not too foolhardy with uh, what you send and where. Um, aggressive play definitely uh, is rewarded quite a bit more in this game than uh, defensive play. Although defensive play can... well, it, they, you could say they both got their um, times when they should be used, but really to win the game you have to be aggressive and our opponents definitely were not aggressive uh, at the beginning and uh, really it just worked out in our favour. We haven't, we didn't really do anything too fancy in terms of super units, although we do have super units, well they do not though, they've got super commanders though, but uh, yeah, we're, we're the ones with the funnel webs, well, one funnel web anyway, but they, they actually, yeah, pretty much everyone's commander has been upgraded except for mine, because I don't think I've actually got level 5 modules at this particular point, which is kind of funny, but level 4 is pretty, uh, pretty good anyway, I mean it's just... Not even using most of his upgrades anyway, he's just going to be uh, reclaiming quite a bit. I suppose he can defend himself at the very least. And uh, whatever, we'll see what happens. In any case, uh, good job by the Nats actually stunning the shit out of everything. And a good job by the. Oh shit, good job by the uh, Banshees being able to destroy uh, basically everything as well. The Moho Geothermal Plant being the killing blow there because of the uh, nuclear cloud that it produced, the nuclear explosion that it produced that destroyed everything, except of course for the Razor's Kiss which can take crap loads of damage. Actually, we could just ignore it, but I think I actually do try to send in uh, one of my glaives at the very least to try to take it out. Ah, here we go, this glaive right here. You know, just uh, in case, I guess, although why the hell isn't he targeting us? I've got no idea. What the hell is up with that low resolution texture? I've got no idea either. I guess that's just the uh, decal, and a uh, good job by the AA actually going after the uh, enemies' banshees as well. I believe they blow up to the enemy. Yes, they do. So yeah, just a steady push. Not really sure what opponents could do, they could try to go for something super when it comes to weapons. We do have anti nukes being deployed at different places, but no actual... Oh, wait a minute. We do have a silencer, let's just see where exactly it'll impact. Will it actually impact um, at all or will it get intercepted? That's the question. We've only got one silencer, and uh, anti nukes they can be overwhelmed. So two nukes per anti nuke will uh, overwhelm them. Two overlapping though is going to require more uh, nukes to overwhelm though, obviously. Sorry, to overwhelm them, obviously. And this one is most likely going to get intercepted. Enemy team's going to be... Okay, yep, it did get intercepted. But that sucks. It got intercepted straight before the enemy uh, team quit. <laughs> Not bad, so... 
Not too shabby, a few more mushroom clouds appearing over the enemies. Moho geothermal plants are probably the. Uh, what else do we have? Yeah, the singularity reactors and all that. And look at that, I actually got a couple of awards myself, even the EMP Wizard Award and complete annihilation. Uh, not bad. Well, there you go. Good game to our opponents. This has been uh, David the Bitch signing off.